Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true dude. welcome back to Empire Total War, where last time the Dutch Empire began to take shape. History, meanwhile, just went completely off the bloody rails. The War of the Spanish Succession, where Spain and France take on broadly everybody, that just sort of didn't happen, because instead, the Netherlands decided, you know what, Spain can keep Flanders, we don't really need that. In fact, if anything, Spain are now acting as a buffer state, meaning France are being surprisingly chill, and Britain and France are doing their own thing. Just, you know, little small war, doesn't seem particularly important. Need to keep an eye on that, though. The British might try and land and take Flanders at some point. Instead, the Dutch have been drawn into the other major European conflict that's supposed to be happening at this point. And this one actually is, and that is the Great Northern War. Russia versus Sweden, which is occurring, though Russia don't seem particularly into it, to be honest, and Sweden have just naffed off to Iceland. So, okay, history has gone, as I say, just a bit off the rails. Still, I know what I want to do today. Step one, find a way to make peace with Sweden. I do not want to be fighting Sweden. There is not much money or benefit in me fighting a major European power. It's just keeping troops and money tied up here that could more productively be sent elsewhere. And number two, sort out the economy. Now, tax and trade is looking pretty good, but right now, the army and the navy are costing me too much. I either need to find a way to cut my armed forces or get some more money in. Economy, peace. That's gonna be the key. And speaking of a dumb amount of money, oh, say hello to my growing empire down over here in South America. This place is, oh, it's lovely. It's absolutely bloody lovely. And it's about to get lovelier because my elite hit squad is just going round island to island, mopping up some bloody pirates. Now, I will say, Antigua is significantly better guarded, but it's better guarded by, yes, just basic garrison mobs. I'm pretty confident that a simple three-unit army of proper colonial line infantry can take it. So, we're going the flip in. Now, the trick about these pirate mobs is, with guns, they're actually not that terrible. Accuracy is a, a tiny bit lower, the real weakness, however, is melee and morale. They will break sooner, and when it comes to a fight, hand-to-hand, -hand, okay, that's where the real weakness lies. So, I might want to try, yeah, charging in. Really, it depends on the battlefield and how these guys draw up. Oh, now this. This is ideal. So, on this occasion, I've spawned way nearer to the town. There are going to be buildings I can jump in straight away, and their numerical superiority is not going to count for much inside tight city streets. I can funnel them in and shoot them one by one. This is precisely what I want to say. And if I can get on top of this central building, the only way they can take it back is trying to storm it. And they have to storm it by going into hand-to-hand -hand combat, which they will lose. So, okay. Where are these guys, and can I get into this town or hall before they arrive? Because I suspect I can. I think I can do it. Get in there, right over there if you'd be so kind, and do it in a bloody hurry. Just get over there as fast as you can. Rest of you, start blocking up the city streets. Alright, just ride across here. Shoot down in that direction. You shoot down in... This direction should be just fine. Then again, there's a possibility some are coming from over here. Maybe more like this sort of an angle. That's probably for the better. Or I could just be here for safety. That's good, but it's a lot of wasted firepower too. Because there's going to be a lot of them around here. Let's say about here-ish for you. And let's say about... I mean, we could try and hold right about here-ish actually... This is, yeah, that's really nice for you. Right there. Good, 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 good. Everybody move in. As fast as you flip in light, please, everybody run. If we're lucky, we can get into position before they're actually ready to move in. We need to lock down this building before they are firing on us. And uh, 
okay, good, they're taking a moment to figure out where they want to be. And they're redrawing up depending on where they're seeing me moving. So just follow the troops. In we flipping go. Waving that lovely flag. Love this guy with the flag, by the way. He's brilliant. Because when the battle starts, he really starts waving it. He gets super into this. So okay, we're just going to lock down the town centre and we're going to work from there. So guys, get in to this building as soon as you can. Oh, here we go. Fire has started emerging from the windows over here. So they're now going to open fire on these lads. And if these lads want to try and take this building back... Okay, there's a small group coming over there. These groups appear to be over here. This seems to be a good position. Because now if they want to try and move into this building... Is there a door? There's no door on this side. Here we go. The break in the windows. And now, now they just open fire. Now, these guys can return fire, I believe. But they don't do so well. This counts as cover. So, this is going to work very nicely. These guys are now swinging it in. In fact, they're swinging in so much. I'm willing to move it you to about here-ish. Get you to here. Forward as fast as you like. If these guys try and move in around the side, we'll just charge them. And there's even fire going on over. Don't know what you guys are firing at, but you're firing at something. Good. Good, good, good. So this is a, this is a good position to defend ourselves with. These guys are going to come around here. There's going to be a shot on some of these guys. They're being fired upon from above. And at this point, yeah, this is going to go beautifully, I would say. These guys are in excellent shape. You guys are moving forward too. Please, uh, fast up. Come on, lads. Let's get into position. Uh, nice and quick, please. Uh, where are you guys? These guys, we might just want to charge. Depending on uh, where they are and what they do next, we might just want to get into uh, position. Uh, guys, fast up. If you'd be so kind, right about here would be lovely. That'll do. Uh, yeah, there's fire coming from the buildings. Uh, nice thing about this is they're just firing from uh, every angle. And guys... I'm going to suggest you want to return fire if you can. Can you guys return fire? They're turning. I mean, honestly, there's more over here, so this is not a bad idea. This is, yeah, this should be fine right over there. You guys should be opening fire momentarily. They should have a shot pretty soon, so just... Come on, guys. Here you go. Anytime you're ready, guys. Anytime you're ready. These guys up here, they're doing a lovely job, but... You guys are not currently... No, they are in range. They're firing on something because they fired once. They're reloading. And here comes the shot. Lovely. Just firing into those guys. And they're just going to take damage. Their morale is poor. They're not firing back. Good. Good, good, good. You guys are also firing. Excellent. So, right now, yeah. Just look at the actual lines here. Which is who's firing versus who's not. Right now, these guys at the back, they're not being that... Just fire on these guys. It's fine. You'll probably hit the guys behind them. The guys at the rear of the line are not necessarily being that useful. So, front row fires. Uh, what are the guys behind doing? Some of them have a shot. Mainly because this guy just died. But the guys at the rear, they're doing nothing. So, at some point, we need to improve that in terms of uh, tactics. Now, what are you guys doing? Exchanging light fire. These guys aren't really doing... Uh, when it says they're firing, I'm not sure they've really got much of a shot. So I'm sure they're not doing uh, that much. These guys could fire into my flank, which is a bit of a problem. It's a slow fight, but I'd say right now this works in our favour. We are slowly grinding them down, and it's time to go in. You guys want to fight? I'm happy to fight. Because, uh, yeah, melee-wise, we are going to destroy you. Fire coming in uh, over there. We probably didn't have a good shot there. You guys might want to move forward the tiniest amount just to speed this up. Oh, there's a flanking force coming in. They're trying to take the building. They are trying to take the building. You guys aren't doing much. Go around over here. Hit these guys in the back if you can. There is supporting fire coming from the building. We can't really see what's going on. But they should not do well hand-to-hand -hand against my troops. And here comes the flank from the rear. These guys coming in. And yeah, these guys are not going to enjoy this. Melee, they're going to be destroyed fast. This is not a bad call, really. These guys should break in the not too distant future. My morale should do much better than theirs. Supporting fire from the town hall. And now, yes, this group versus these two. This group versus this one, actually. They are winded. The supporting fire coming from above. And a couple of groups around the outskirts are not providing much support. The buildings are providing good cover. This works for me. This is useful. 
there we go. There goes group number one. They are properly shattered. And they are now running off the field, which is going to provide a morale debuff to their friends. They're concerned their friends are routing. I would be too. So these guys are going to be very useful. These guys can now get back to doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is shooting out the windows at these stupid bastards. All right, guys up in the building, please concentrate fire on this group because one of them is shaken, now wavering. You can actually give orders even while they're in the building. So I've just ordered everyone over to these windows and looks like we have got one break at least. They're looking very dicey to me. Okay, I'll admit the grind is not going quite as well as I'd hoped, but I'm worried there might just be... Slightly too many of them and slightly too few of us. I've just been taught a bit of a humbling lesson there. Back in these days, tightness made a huge, huge difference to combat effectiveness. That's on me, so I guess the pirates get to live another day. Oh, and it's going to be trickier next time. The bastards are building walls. Or to be precise, not walls. It's actually like fortifications. We'll get to that when we get to that. But yes, it's not really walls these days. Wouldn't really be historically accurate. People did not build walls around towns in the 18th century. Still on the plus side, we don't need to pay their entire wages anymore, so that's nice at the bare minimum. Ah, but here's... here's something I wasn't thinking about. My troops may not be capable of taking Antigua and locking down the island, but the pirates don't actually have... A a land army. They can train buccaneers, but I don't know whether they ever actually will. And I don't know whether they'll ever transport troops. I think they just spawn ships out of their port. But their shipyard is currently broken. And they can't actually repair it because I'm occupying it with my army. And my army, though it is battered and did technically just lose, uh, can't be displaced by a garrison. A garrison can't leave the town. Oh, John, you're a bloody genius. I mean, apparently you're terrible at fighting the battles, but you're still a bloody genius because uh, this might neutralize the pirates. Anyway, right, guys, have a nice life. That's just where you live now. This is your punishment for sucking at fighting. And as for the fleet, we're just abandoning these bastards because uh, I want these guys uh, back in Europe. If the pirate fleets have indeed been neutralised, I don't need a big fleet right here. But Sweden, Sweden does need a big fleet to deal with them. Their entire army might currently be in Iceland. If I could unify all my fleets and intercept them, oh my goodness, we might be able to sink their entire army at sea. Oh, and better and better, Sweden appeared to have, uh, yes, repaired their port. Now... I could go and destroy it, but that would mean the trade would stop coming in. On the other hand, if I was just to uh, park my boat right at flipping here, then all of a sudden we're doing some raiding of our own. We've learned some lessons from those pirates. It's not a huge amount, but it's not nothing either. It goes under the other tab. So yeah, you get 3,000 base gold just as your, like, uh, starting amount. But you also gain, yes, however much you're raiding. On this occasion, it would appear to be about 200 gold. So I think they had, uh, yeah, about 1,300. So we're stealing about 20% of their trade value, uh, to be honest. I'm gonna move my ship down to here just to keep an eye out for any additional troops. And we will continue to start sacking that. So, okay. Maybe just for safety. Keep an eye out over here too. I am concerned about reinforcements coming in. Though, to be honest, they could just go and attack uh, Amsterdam directly. How about we get some new cannons on the field? Ready for trouble. Oh, and one more thing too. Which is, yes, we need to uh, touch upon this. Army replenishment, how it works in this game. It was a bit of a mid-step between the current system of just replenishment in any friendly territory by default and the old system where you had to be in a town with a relevant training facility. In this game, all you do is highlight units you want replenishing and then you click this here button and that starts them replenishing. Nothing happens next turn, but the turn after they'll be topped up to maximum. Unless they take additional losses in the next turn or two, in which case it will just fill them up to whatever would have been the maximum when I push the button. Though, 
I do not have the money, so... Okay, maybe cancel the new troops, it's all fine. Alright, maybe just one more cannon, that'll give us enough money to get these guys uh, moving in the right direction. Because uh, I want my troops to be... Oh, bloody hell. That general would cost me 7,000. Okay, maybe losing the general was a bit of an error. Get these guys in production. I have another good general right here. He's better off going and joining the front. I'm going to send him with... Uh, do I really want to send everything? This is dangerous, but... I'm sending in my general with some line infantry to go and reinforce. Oh, and here we go. Perfect bloody timing. Just as I was getting deeper and deeper into the Swedish war, France has finally made their bloody move. And I suspect they're doing it because... Uh, they want to steal my bit of Guiana, just as I was planning to steal theirs. So, uh, okay, Britain should really be in on this. Guys, I am begging you, please help. And uh, Spain didn't. We're not at war with Spain. Okay, that is magnificent news, but Britain has joined us. Beautiful. And yet they're marching in, but... We've got an army too, so okay. This is probably a variety of troops. I should just hang back for the time being. But now they're going to start sacking my trade. And that's a very large bit of my economy. This is why you don't really want huge amounts of uh, war with uh, your neighbours uh, when you're the Netherlands. Because your trade goes past their countries. And there goes the raiding. Okay. Now, they've also got troops being trained up there on Martinique. We could go and get those, but oh darn it. If I hadn't assaulted Antigua last turn, we could go and do that right now. We'd have been able to walk in there. Such a shame. Ooh, but here's exciting. We've got a new agent. Right, let's talk about agents in this game, because we haven't touched on that yet. In this game, you don't actually choose to recruit agents. You simply have buildings that have a chance of spawning an agent. As you own more schools, you get more gentlemen, who are basically your research scholars. They can do a bit of dueling against other agents if you want to. It's not really their job. Their job is to go and sit in schools and make your research go faster. There are also priests produced by religious buildings, because towns can be turned into churches. They will, on occasion, spawn religious guys, who convert the local area to your religion. And finally, I did start with one of these guys, but he was assassinated very quickly. The Rake, who is more of a spy and assassin, rolled into one. Very good at sneaking around, taking out other agents, spying on your enemy. And yes, they are produced by the Happiness Building. So basically, yes, when you get a new town, you could turn it into a school, which might produce a gentleman. A pleasure palace of some description, like in an inn or a tavern in Medieval 2, which might produce a Rake. Or a church, which might produce a priest. Strangely, towns don't produce anything. It kind of feels like every type of town should be able to produce something. Like, say, an industrialist who lives in a town and might make it slightly more profitable, but such a thing simply does not exist. For some reason, three of the four town variants have agents, one doesn't. And while I'm complaining about really, really minor stuff, can I just say I am incredibly frustrated that the Netherlands, their capital, has only six things in it. The capital and five subregions, and no additional villages. It is literally the Republic of the Seven United Netherlands. There should have been seven things in here, one for each of the Netherlands. But there's one too few, and I'm furious about this over a decade on. Also, check out that trade income, which just took a big knock because now all my trade is flowing right next to France. Good, 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 good. Okay. Bare minimum, we do have some good stuff coming in. Britain is in on this war. Britain will help out with the war. It's going to be A-OK. -okay. What have you got, by the way? Archers together with colonial militia. Honestly, I think we could take this fight. I have got native warriors who will just run in and annihilate archers. Now, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get off one more bit of recruitment before we actually get going. If I can, great. But I'm also going to have, uh, yeah, two... Actually, I'm not 100% sure what the type of garrison is going to be. 
be. Uh, it may or may not match what I saw on the islands. Probably not. But yeah, start training troops around here. Unfortunately, with the boats naffing off, I cannot ship reinforcements. Bare minimum, though, yes. The pirates now simply cannot do anything about their port. Meaning there should now be nothing else going on. My ships can, meanwhile, get back to Europe. Send them over there in a hurry. I need the seas under control. The French Navy needs to be destroyed, though. That fleet is not in the best shape, to be honest. I need the war with Sweden to be over as soon as possible. Now, my plan was potentially to send my army deeper into Scandinavia, take some of this territory off Sweden, and then trade it back to them in return for peace. Problem we've got, however, is... Yes, unfortunately, I'm not sure I want to send my army that far away from Amsterdam with France potentially knocking any day. And as I don't have a rake, I've got no way of spying on France. Well, actually, I could send in the gentleman. He might get himself assassinated very soon, but it's better than nothing. Just keep an eye out over here. Where else would France go? I know they're at war with Austria. But they've got no real way of getting to Austria. So, where's their army gone? Best hope we've got is Britain decides to deploy the full might of its fleet. Britain has got a decent fleet there. It has got another fleet floating about right here. Including, oh, fourth rates. That's the good stuff right there. Britain should be able to absolutely annihilate this little fleet. Oh, this is Briggs and Sloops. Oh yeah, Britain can annihilate the French fleet. So hopefully they do. Britain keeps the sea clear. That keeps the trade flowing. And yes, my fleet isn't here yet, by the way. It'll be showing up over here sometime next turn. So come on, Britain, go and murder the French fleet. That'd be brilliant. Don't know where the French army is. Could be down over here as well. But does France have military access from Spain? Let's see if we could just sort this out nice and easy. Because not only is region trading on the table, technology trading is too. And technology is valuable. I will give Sweden 10 grand over the next 10 turns, together with knowledge of canister shot, in return for peace. See if they're willing to go for it. Oh, They want Norway. I'm not willing to give them Norway, but I will give you Copenhagen if we can agree right now that we are just going to make peace and be on our way. All right, I'm willing to do that. Copenhagen, not so important to me. Norway, way more important, and I just want peace with bloody Sweden so they can turn their attention back towards guarding my eastern flank. Because over there, there is Poland, there is Lithuania, there is Russia. I want Sweden as a nice Protestant barrier between me and them. Me and Sweden should rightly be friends. So technology, Denmark, and peace. You willing to go for that, Sweden, buddy? Darn it, he's not going for it. They're not having Norway. It's simply too bloody valuable. Ooh, but it's nice. For whatever reason... A general out here in Dutch Guiana only costs 800. Now that we shall have, because that's a free unit of cavalry, which could absolutely change the tide of this war. So, I'm guessing you, buddy, you don't have cavalry. You've got archers. Archers with a defense of two. Okay. I'd say the balance of power just a bloody shifted in this war. If we can also stop them from having any navy in the Caribbean, that means they can't move their troops. Though they are upgrading, there is interest as to what's going on here. Okay, with no sign of the French forces on land whatsoever, the reinforcements are going home. With that, Amsterdam is pretty well defended. There's also more cannons coming in too. We could do with maybe one, and if I train you, I can't afford anything else. Okay, cavalry is a tiny bit cheaper, and not that much cheaper, mind. Yeah, one more line infantry. 
One more line infantry. So we've now got a general cavalry unit. Three line infantry. Whole bunch of little militia. And some cannon coming in. Amsterdam can defend itself right there. We're going in. We're going into the Baltic. One of these is going to be easy to pick off. Then we return it to Sweden as part of the peace treaty. All right, we could go and snipe off at Finland or maybe St. Petersburg. That looks valuable, though that would bring me dangerously near to Russia. That's got walls. That is walled up right over there. They've built walls in Riga, Estonia and Livonia. Finland will be the easiest pick off. We'll use that as leverage to force peace. Though the downside is, if Sweden does show up with their army that's probably somewhere in the ocean right now, the holdings in Scandinavia are pretty much unguarded. Okay, just keep on keeping on. Nice and slow, please. Let's use the nice slow animation to see what we're looking at here. Obviously, we're not going into Stockholm. Stockholm is going to be very well guarded. Swing down over here close enough I can see. That is... Sorry, that's Prussia. Similar colour, not actually Sweden. No trouble, mate. No trouble. Here comes... Uh, there they come! Oh, Britain. You magnificent, sexy bastards. You just got beaten. Please send additional fleets until you stop sucking. They've just also sacked the French port right there. And then they're just hovering on. There's the French army. There's the French army. You guys are returning to port and then going to attack. Good. I think they're now off and you are coming over here. Oh, buddy. You're in trouble, actually. You're in a lot of trouble. Okay, two basic militias. Uh, poor morale. Then we have got uh, three, yes, archers. Terrible in melee. What have I got? Some decent melee troops. Get these guys uh, on top of the archers. They will melt. And one of the archers is uh, the general. So eliminate them. We're golden. The final calm citizens are not actually terrible. Keep them at range as far as possible. Militia, not bad either. So we've got three guns uh, to their two. We've got strong melee lads. They've got nothing melee. And we've got cavalry. Big morale shock right up the arse. I think we've got this. I don't know what the balance of power is saying. This is fine. All right, they're starting uh, over there, away from the town. It's also their job uh, to come and attack us. Do we have a single structure we can... Okay, there's some ruins here. I'm not convinced those are going to be amazing for occupying, but whatever. There is also... There is that nice town or hall structure, but that is... Oh, sorry, that's actually off the map on this occasion. We're not fighting there. Apparently, they're not approaching from uh, that angle for some reason. Oh, here they are. My lads with the axes. Now, you guys are going to be the real bloody stars. I'm sure of it. Okay, we'll draw up back here. A little bit. May as well use the ruin. We'll send one of the, uh, yes, conscripts into there. Then we've got more Philocom citizenry. Then we've got our lovely guys right here. We can also build uh, trenches uh, to provide a little bit of cover because we are, in fact, the uh, defenders. Though, yeah, only troops that are actual proper trained troops can do that. Random militia cannot. So you guys can't do a thing. Then we have got round the rear, we've got one lad over here, one lad over here, and the cavalry are way out on at one side. Ready to just move around and hit anyone in the back. Priority, assassinate the archers. Right, getting over to here, and uh, where are they? They are, okay, they're all the way over there. It's going to take them a while to get to us. We could draw up a little bit differently if we want to. This isn't in the best position, but it's better than nothing just to get you guys over to here. Get you guys over to this position round to the back. Send the cavalry way up the hill. Get them out the way. Get them ready to charge in when the moment is right. And yeah, just let them come to us. Because they are going to get tired in this heat before they even make it to us. And as we just learned, yes, um, as it turns out, tiredness matters a lot. We learned that lesson in Antigua pretty well, hopefully. Now, the one advantage the French have is uh, they do have, uh, yes, two units of uh, colonial militia. Now, those are pretty good. They do have 160 troops compared to only 80 for the Philocom citizens. So, uh, there's a lot more firepower there. But on the other hand, uh, 
we are now squatting in an ancient ruin. Not 100% convinced it's going to do me a huge, huge amount of good, but it's like better than no cover. Honestly, I feel like we could have just taken notes from these guys and built proper cover, or you could take advantage of this time to build more cover for other people, but whatever. Oh yeah, they're running at this point. They are going to get themselves not fresh sooner rather than later. So we got bowmen, the two militia, and then more bowmen on the flanks. I'm not sure you can tell at a glance which unit is the general. I don't think they're actually marked differently. But one thing I will say is uh, these units on the flank, the other two are on the far flank. Suggesting possibly this one might be special. Now I could send my cavalry in for a bit of a charge. Do I think it's worth it? No. To be honest, I do not. Just be ready to move in when they get a bit closer. Get these guys ready to charge. My native warriors are going to absolutely annihilate anything they get in touch with. So really, I want these guys to take the initial shot. Giving me the opportunity to just charge in and finish them off. And uh, yes, this is where we're going to hit them. We're going to let these guys uh, move in. The archers are going to open fire on the ruin. When they do, and thus they're distracted, uh, I said to the native warriors uh, to hit them uh, at the front. The cavalry moves in uh, and hits them in the flank. They break, we roll up the line. That's the plan. The other flank, meanwhile, maybe we play a little bit more defensively. We've got some good defensive stuff going on here. See the bowmen. Keep my warriors a little bit further back. Let them fire at these guys. These guys have got protection. So these guys are hopefully being nice and distracted. There might be a one little shot coming in. But honestly, they've taken like no damage. In they come. And in comes my general for the flank. Let's just get down for this. This is going to be an absolute flipping slaughter. And they're already running. They're on skirmish mode. Well, it's about to get worse for you lads. Because I've also got cavalry coming up the arse. So... This is going precisely as I wanted it to. They're already wavering. In comes the cavalry. These guys don't really know what they want to do at this point. That was that was the enemy general. I was right. My instincts were spot on. He is already running. He might come back, but don't worry too much about it. Now there is fire and counter fire. And with the general dead, they're kind of falling apart immediately. Send forward the other warriors. Wrap this up. Go after the bowmen. I want these guys wiped out. And the cavalry is going to be very good at pursuing. Because if we can completely wipe them out. We can walk down the coast. And just completely turn the tables. I want no losses. I just want us going in and mopping up. In particular. If there's basically no losses on the native warriors. Then we can just go and sort this out. Oh this is going to be beautiful. This is absolutely bloody beautiful. Here we go. Last few units being a hunted down. Love the jumping animations, by the way. They're very, very good indeed. There are a lot of really nice animations in this game. Final few are now being shot down. Native bowmen are off. That should be a victory. Even if it is, screw it. Continue the fight. I want them ridden down. Nope. Continue. Crack on. Nobody gets out of here alive. Army pretty much wiped out to only 51 casualties. Oh, France, you're going to regret starting this. Oh, we've just caught sight of a, a Swedish army. Do we know where it is? Because it's quite large. It's also near to my borders because I can see there is, a, yes, one of my flags on a nearby building. Oh, that is not good news. I mean, we could... I really don't want to give the bloody Norway for peace. I do not want to. No. Okay. My fleet has arrived in Europe. The Caribbean fleet is now here. It's a bit damaged at the moment. I need to get it home for uh, repairs. Probably should have repaired it before we sent it over. But what can you do? The Swedish army is now extremely nearby to Norway. Next turn... They will just walk in. Not least as... Oh, la da Get Captain Paved Roads over here. Right, okay. I could slow them down by sending some troops over to the Star Fort. That would, yeah, probably halt their advance for now. But it's not going to be enough. That is... Oh, that's nothing but line infantry and cannons. No, that just walks through. If I don't make peace with them this turn... They're getting at Norway 
anyway. There is no way I can stop that. My army is uh, miles out of position. I need to find a solution immediately. And that means that peace must now be purchased at any cost. Because anything is better than losing Norway. Okay, losing Dutch Guiana, that would be worse, I'll admit. But only just. Alright, these are valuable, valuable territories we have to buy off Sweden. But negotiating the end of a war in this game was so fun because everything's on the table. Technology, regions, money, everything. So, all right. Let's just start off with, I want peace and see what he says. Because he might come back to me with a counteroffer. No counteroffer. Okay, we're not even close. Let's try sweetening the deal because technology tends to be valued pretty highly by the AI. Now, I'm going to regret teaching Sweden how to turn their cannons into shotguns when they just walk into Norway and shoot me with their new fancy shotgun cannons, but they're going to research it anyway pretty soon. It's not a problem. And on top of that, I am willing to pay reparations. I'm not sure 100% what I'm repairing because I haven't actually... Wait, have we even fought a battle against Sweden? I don't think we actually have. We've vaguely looked at each other menacingly, and you've just decided that you've got the right to own Scandinavia, like we're playing bloody Crusader Kings and you've got some de jure right to do it, but you don't. All right, you were too slow. I got there first. I was the one that took Norway. I was the one that took Denmark. They are mine. So maybe a little bit of money will keep him sweet, because his wealth is... It's high, but it's not as good as mine. And mine's already not great. So potentially, a bit of money might just sweeten the deal. Let's start off with a grand for the next five turns. That'll hurt me a bit, but honestly, Norway will pay for itself. So I'm giving you money, I'm giving you tech, and to be honest, my army is looking pretty good, pretty strong, and maybe in a position to take Finland in a turn or two. Oh, flip me, he went for it. Okay, that's... That's a relief, actually. That's a big relief. Okay, turn the fleet around. Turn the fleet around. Can we maybe also get a trade deal? No. No trade deal, just Japs. Oh, and there's my fully topped up army, by the way. They do heal even while they're on the sea if you've used the heal button. So, okay. It's time to get out of here, though. Oh. In the meantime, Russia now has access to a port. Okay, we're going to be wanting peace with them, too. They're mostly going to be too busy dealing with Sweden, hopefully. But just in case, let's have peace on the Eastern Front. Because I'd really like to turn the entirety of my attention to France. Okay, I've got no technology Russia wants. But I'm willing to offer him a little bit of money to just naff off and leave me alone. And Dutch Guiana, good luck with that, you stupid bastard. Okay, I feel like we're not on the same page here. Let's just nudge the amount up a tiny bit and spread it out over time. And no, we're not getting anywhere here. Fine, we'll deal with that later. Still on the plus side, I've managed to hold on to Copenhagen, which I was not bloody expecting. Like, at all. Alright, troops, home, right the flip. Now, if you would be so kind. So, peace with Sweden secured. Honestly, five grand, not the biggest cost in the world. I think that's... that's okay. I could deal with that cost, that's reasonable. Objective two, however, the economy... Not so great. Trade income is still lagging a little bit. Though hopefully now Britain is involved in the war in France and we're still not at war with Spain. That should sort itself out a little bit. The problem really is, yes, there is one downside to expanding in the way I've expanded. You see, trade ports do produce bonus wealth and that's bloody brilliant, but they do not provide bonus trade routes. Despite what this says... The rule is, if you want to provide a bonus trade route, the trader has to be able to get from that port to Amsterdam. Because everything has to run through Amsterdam. Despite everything. 
after all this bloody time, it might be time to make a move on Flanders. Because Flanders has a beautiful, wealthy port we could turn into a proper trade port that could increase the amount of trading we could do. And then all of a sudden, oh my goodness, the Prussians, the Ottomans, we could start trading with all sorts of people. But what I ask are we going to sell these new people? Why we're going to sell them spices and gold that we're about to go take off the bloody French because they started a war and they really bloody shouldn't have done. And just for fun, I'm going to dump a little bit of money into upgrading these beautiful, beautiful territories. So uh, Paramaribo, that's going to get bonus 3% tax. Not bad, not bad at all. Oh, and Norway, you deserve a better state house as well. abso bloody loot -ly. And as for back home, once we actually make it to Amsterdam, I have got a whole bunch of beautiful, beautiful line infantry ready to go. The army was just fixed up. On campaign against Denmark, it picked up some experience. It is stronger than it used to be. Two cannons, many line infantry, and one general who's... Not the best, but he'll bloody do, I suppose, uh, way back home. You know what? You're not so bad, buddy. You'll be fine. Although I'll admit, one thing I'd like to see with my own eyes, uh, I want to see Sweden walk away. Because, buddy, you have got bigger problems, okay? Oh, and here comes Great Britain, those big damn heroes. You love these guys when you're playing as the Dutch, because they just go around and trash the French fleet. It is beautiful. Don't love the giant French army that he's uh, clearly amassing near Paris. That concerns me a bit. Oh, and here it comes. I think we have come across just the right moment to bring the army home. It was worth paying Sweden for peace because uh, France is coming in. Oh, speaking of which, they're, they're properly coming in. They decided to come and take us on themselves with uh, four bowmen, including... Oh, a clear tell who the general is. Oh, guys, you're going to regret this. Oh, I've even got a massive defensive structure. And they've got nothing but archers. Oh, this is just going to be embarrassing. Plan's pretty simple. Just a hide behind the house over here, which my one gun unit is just uh, inside and waiting. And as soon as they get in range, we fire. They panic because they've just been fired upon at which point, my cavalry and warriors run in entire army routes in seconds. Alright, speak of the devil, the fire is now coming in down on those guys. They are not going to be enjoying that, they are not well armoured. This will do a lot of damage very quickly. And then we just, yeah, hit them in this flank over here. They are steady, they don't like it. Send them in Send in the cavalry. Keep you back, to be honest. You guys are already a little bit damaged. So we'll wait until the general's dead. Then we'll send in the next round. So they're being fired upon. They hate it. They're going to fire some uh, shots at me. Honestly, it's barely going to do anything. Their general's going to die in a matter of moments. They're already running. They're already on skirmish mode. Here comes my general hopping over the fence. Double at strike. They are going to break ear flipping immediately and as soon as that's done these guys are going to collapse too may as well send you guys in there he is generals are already dead that should be the army done nice and simple oh frads you were way too aggressive there end result their army wiped me still pretty much at full strength and i'm gaining experience too there they go, Sweden walking away confirmed, probably wanting to pay way more attention to their eastern flank. Honestly, understandable, good for them. That should hopefully mean no trouble with them for the time being. Oh, and somebody killed Portugal, presumably Spain under the circumstances. And there's my flipping bayonet. Right, so I've now got my first upgrade for troops. My line infantry now have the ability to be way more effective in melee than they were previously. If I'd waited for that tech before attacking Antigua, I probably could have won. So, I'd say that's enough for now, but next time, oh, we know what we're doing now. It's time for a showdown between me and France. We are just going to walk into their territory, steal their sugar, steal their spices, steal their gold. It's gonna be beautiful. 
Meanwhile, back in Europe itself, I feel like it might be time for a very big, proper showdown. Our experienced army is heading home. In Amsterdam, a brand new army has been trained. Put them together, we have got one a hell of a force. Question is, do we really want to go to war against Spain? We might not need to worry about that. I suspect France is coming in. They are going to be arranging military access with Spain and coming pretty bloody soon. So, the Dutch versus the French coming up next time. Hopefully, you join me for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Empire Total War. Thank you very much and goodbye. No, this no, this no, guy's no, enjoying no. that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. Oh my god. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky. Look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear. And then oh, in come the chariots. Yeah.